once described his followers, or Morihu, as a garden of flowers. This year, only a small part of the 40,000 has gathered in front of the Manuao, the meeting house. They've come to be with their present leader, their Tumuaki, Mata Te Reo Hura, Ratana's daughter, seen here in purple and white. The occasion is the 117th anniversary of the birth of their founder. Also here to celebrate is the leader of the Kingitanga movement, the Māori queen, Te Atairangi Kahu, and her husband, Fatu Moana. The Ratana organization is twofold, the church and the secular, symbolized by the apotoro, or apostles, the akonga, the raupo waiata, takutai moana, through to the afina, or sisters. One doctrine which distinguishes the Ratana faith is a belief in the true and faithful angels, intermediaries between man and God. Ratana believed the same of himself as the mangai, or mouthpiece of God. Ratana died in 1939 as the Second World War was beginning. He and his wife Urumanao Ngapaki are buried in front of the temple. Before he died, he prophesied he would become the government. Before he was born, it was prophesied someone would unite the Maori people. The land wars and confiscations which followed the Treaty of Waitangi devastated the Māori people spiritually as well as physically. They came to believe that just as the clover was killing the fern, so the Māori were being supplanted by the European. Many chiefs had lost their mana. The people lost heart. The remnants, Morihu, needed somehow to come together again. Out of this came a new brand of leader, spiritual leaders, Aperahama Taonui, and Te Koti Rikirangi were but two who prophesied the coming of a special man from Whangaehu in the west. From the plowshare at the age of 45, T.W. Ratana became the fulfillment of those prophecies. It goes back to the prophetic utterance again, where Te Koti Rikirangi stated, there comes the day that you will see a garden of flowers that will grow up and bloom at the mouth of the Whangaihu River. And when these plants grow up, its perfume will be accumulated and distributed throughout the country. E putake i te wahapu o Whangaihu, e kāri puti puti ātahua, Ah, e putai tōna kakara, e toha toha ngia e puta noa, te mutu te aukatoa. Wirumu Ratana was born at Te Kauo, near the town of Bulls. He was the grandson of Ratana Ngahina, and the son of gentleman farmer Uru Kohai and his wife Ihipera. He gained the reputation of being an excellent farmer, and of being rather wild, but his marriage to Uru Manao Ngapaki was a steadying influence. They had 18 children. When World War I called for fighting men, Ratana's eldest son, Tokoru, offered his services. Ratana himself turned more and more to the spiritual side and to his auntie and prophet, Mere Rikiriki, who believed a sign of calling would come to Ratana. <laughs> On March the 18th, 1918, Ratana was camping with his family at Whangehu when several huge waves dumped two whales on the beach. One was killed outright, while the other was in great pain. His calling became clear. He too would fish for men, but in two stages. To Ture Wairua, the spiritual plan would be relatively straightforward while to Ture Tangata, the political, would be a more painful process.
On November the 8th, after a day in the fields, came the visitation. A small cloud approached him, and a voice told him to be at peace. The voice said it was the Holy Ghost, and that it was appointing him the mouthpiece of God to unite the Maori people, turning them to the Lord. It is said his family didn't believe him. They thought him to be mad or drunk. But then an angel appeared before Rata and repeated the message that he, the Mangai, was to turn the people from the power of the Toto. Ratana then went through a hokamato toda, a time of testing. Hey, Katia na korero. Hetanga takora no hau. Why are you He's doing it again. He's insane. We'll have to take him to an asylum. No, no, it's not our place to interfere. The spirit of the Lord is upon him. <laughs> He also went to Mount Taranaki to meditate at Victoria Falls, Terere Akapu. It was here that he saw the star and the crescent moon, which Ratana adopted as a symbol for his new faith. Everything, as I believe, was by inspiration. Now, referring to the moon and the star, you see, the top point refers to the father which is blue. The white point refers to the Son of God, which will come unto you in a cloud. The red point refers to the Holy Spirit. And you will find those three, the, all, the uppermost. And then below, the purple, which refers to, co to the co-workers, the holy and faithful angels. This is the emblem of tolerance. The star represents the star of David, so the Christian faith. The moon represents other faiths, which of course it brings them together, which we believe in our faith. Yeah? We believe in our faith, that whatever church you belong to, you are my brother. You are Iho's Tong. Yeah? Old tribal antagonisms and anti parkia feelings began to break down as people were drawn to Ratana. Ratana knew the Māori mind. By questioning, he brought about change of belief in tapu and the Māori atu. Tēnā koe, William. Tēnā nā nā koe, te māngai. How long have you been like this? Since I was a young man, about 40 years. And who did you see for treatment? It's Tohunga, Jepa. And what did they give as a cure? Again, eh? You won't need this anymore, William. Do you believe in the Trinity? Aye. You will recover soon, William. It will take time, but you will recover. As long as you have faith, in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. In a few minutes, you'll walk away from here without your crutches. Soon, I'll take them away from you. The Karakia time. Oh my here. Oh. Oh, 
天皇のラクエパ。天皇のラクエ。はい。天皇のラクエパ。はい、ラチュラクエウィレム。いろんなマナーキタがてるんがろう。The Whare Māori is the only carved house in the Marae. Ratana had it built as a museum to house the objects of the exorcised Atua or spirits. Ornaments, crutches, spectacles, and weapons were kept here, safe and harmless under Ratana's mana. By 1919, news of Ratana's faith healing had spread far and wide, even overseas. Many people moved their homes to be with the Māngai. Many more who couldn't travel wrote to Ratana, and some claimed. Kau kau hai, kau kau hai kiri kanua. Ada pelatih tak? Pelatih tak. Cicero, sorry. Eh, anak. Cicero hai kakarik. Nia hai. Kau hai tak? Aiy, aiy, kau hai tak. Occasionally, Rathana found time to take a much-needed break from the Mordehu. In appreciation, the children composed this song for the manga. Hi, everybody. Hello, hello. In 1925, the Ratana Church was registered, and Ratana climbed down from his first vehicle and began the groundwork for the second, the political. Arepa, Omeka, Piriwiri Tua, and Hamuera symbolise the four corners of New Zealand. The meeting house itself is divided territorially, not tribally, following the same lines as the four Māori seats established much earlier in the 1860s. It was Ratana's ambition to win those seats with the four quarters. The Treaty of Waitangi and the need to have it ratified had been a sticking point with the Waikato tribes and King Rata for a long time. Ratana joined them, and a four-year crusade to take a covenant to King George V gathered 40,000 signatures. Ratana and a party of 40 duly went to England, but were refused an audience with the King and the Prime Minister. You'd think the New Zealand High Commission would have helped us. The orders have come from New Zealand. The government does not want it known here what's happened to us in our land. What else can we do? Nothing. We can do no more here in London. This city will face its own judgment one day for the way it's treated our people.
Out of this, Ratana prophesied a second world war and he would become the government. Ratana went to Geneva, the headquarters of the League of Nations. Although the League wasn't in session, Ratana was received by international delegates as he tried to gain world recognition of Maori rights. They travelled also to Japan and were greeted by Bishop Nakara of the Methodist Church. An exchange of gifts on their departure sealed a friendship which exists even today. But Ratana was wrongly accused of making a deal with the Japanese to invade New Zealand and the New Zealand government even asked the British to make inquiries. On January 1928, the temple was opened on the prophet's birthday, and Ratana stood between the two bell towers and announced his spiritual works were completed. A year later, Tiaki Omana, Hami Tokouru, Ratana's son, Paraire Paikea, and Eruira Tirakatane stood unsuccessfully as Ratana candidates in the four Māori seats. But in 1932, Eruera Tirakatane became the first independent Ratana member of parliament for Southern Māori, with a policy based on the Treaty of Waitangi. With the depression racking the country in the 30s, Labour under Michael Joseph Savage became the government in 1935, and Ratana gained two of the four Māori seats. Then Ratana visited the new Prime Minister. Mr. Ratner. How do you do, Prime Minister? It's a great pleasure to see you again. Thank you, Mr. Savage, for giving your time for this meeting. I welcome you to my Marae. Please. Kaita Pai. Prime Minister, I have gifts which I would like to give to you as a memento of our meeting today and as a symbol of our unity. May I? The first of my gifts are these three huia feathers and their waka, the potato. The huia feathers represents the heritage of the Māori of this land. The waka of the feathers is a potato. As it happens, we have no land left in which to grow our food. This represents the power and authority of the Māori people today which I now place in your hands. This watch belonged to my ancestor, Te Ratana Ngahina, who was loyal to the government of his time. I give this also into your hands. This badge represents the Ratana people who number over 40,000. Today, I commend them to your care. Therefore, Mr. Premier, may God bless you and your government so that you will always be mindful of your Maori people. Mr. Ratner, I am overwhelmed by the great significance of the gifts you have presented to me, which I accept with pleasure, and for which I thank you a thousand times. I am aware how precious you find the treaty and I take it upon myself to undo the wrongs and injustices that your people have suffered. Greetings to you, Ratna, and to the people of the land. Dinner with the Premier. John. The alliance was sealed. In 1946, the Four Quarters held the balance of power for the Labour government. Today, the Four Quarters still exist, although only two of the Maori MPs are Ratna. The things that uh the late Michael Joseph Savage talked about actually came to pass uh, by way of legislation and towards self-determination and all of those sorts of things. I mean, the Board of Māori Affairs or the Māori Land Board was set up way back in those years, but it was then started to, to be dismantled by the, the previous administration, uh, or should I say the National Party. It's probably fair to say that 99%, if not 100% of Ratans still follow the Labour Party. But basically, even those people, even those people, I'm bound to say, uh, support the uh, policies uh, in which we, as a party, are pursuing. There's very few Māoris, in fact, in this country that disagree with that. Because, you see, in the end, all of those policies aim towards self-determination. 
Ratna has been a movement more than a simple religion. It has brought people together across tribal boundaries. They are basically simple and, and relatively poor people, but they've managed to maintain an ability to stand on their own feet and to stick by their ideals, and that has given them a strength and I think a growing strength. Ratanapar was registered as a township in 1954. Today it is a thriving, self-contained community 12 kilometers east of Wanganui. Some say Ratana's work has finished, that the Alpha and the Omega is complete. But for his daughter and present leader of the Ratana church, there is the faith, the land, and issues of the future. She's very humble. She was one of those that witnessed when her father was put through the trials by the Holy Spirit. And she saw everything. What else can I doubt? She's very old now. And I thank God for giving her that strength to carry out the cloak which is on her shoulders. Thank you. 